the Dragon capsule and crew are in a nominal orbit uh, in a few minutes. Knowing that we're here in space and thinking, we made it safely. We're here. Oh my gosh, we just went for an incredible ride. Um, now we're here for three days. This is amazing. Um, wow. And how was the acclimatization? Because I know astronauts who have the, have had the longer shuttle and the ISS missions know they have to take it steady for the first 24 hours to acclimatize and get their senses and try and avoid too much motion sickness. <laughs> yeah. um, how, how, how did the crew right. cope with that so, transition? Yeah, so you said you were watching the documentary on Netflix, right? So, you know, I, I'm, I'm giving the thumbs up after my centrifuge training after that great moment of, of using some of the resources they had on board. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was also a victim of space motion sickness, but I, I will say none of us managed, uh, no, nobody actually threw up, but um, that's in good part because we were, uh, we were using medicine just like pretty much every astronaut does. And, uh, uh, but I still wasn't feeling well. Haley did have to give me a little bit of a uh, medicine. Um, she did great with that and taking care of us. Um, she was a stellar medical officer there. Um, Jared backed her up because normally I was Haley's backup for medical things. And uh, Jared did a great job helping her take care of that. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I, after about after about 12 hours, um, I was feeling really great, ready to go. Took things a little bit slower, uh, but 24 hours into it, you know, up didn't matter anymore. Your inner ear turns off. And so you just go about your business and mm. you say, I know I need to move this direction or I have to access this. I'll just flip my feet around this way and grab what I need to do. And, and so yeah, 24 hours into it, we were all just flipping around and having a good time accessing things in a whole new way. Mm. I mean, you, you've got some windows, but when you open that big hatch to access that big dome, the cupola up, up there, what was that moment like? We've seen some of the videos. Um, that was breathtaking. I um, I still kind of choke up a little bit thinking about it. Uh, on the ground, we were practicing in the sim, like, okay, what's it gonna be like? Oh, we should play the music from Space Odyssey 2001 while we do it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, but I will say that was way more impactful. And even hearing the music that Dr. Proctor was playing on, on her phone or, um, or on the iPad was absolutely so impactful. Uh, the timing couldn't have been better. She did a great job timing her, her camera motions to the music as well. Uh, you know, I'm pulling back the hatch, you know, slowly because the actuators have, you know, braking mechanisms on there so it doesn't swing or hurt anyone. And, you know, I, I think pulling it back and then all of a sudden seeing this beautiful bright blue orb right above us, filling the cupola, seeing the entire circumference of the earth, having an unbroken horizon of it um, was incredibly mind blowing and breathtaking. There's nothing else really like it. I, I, I started to think about how do I describe this to folks and it's just you know, when we're sitting here on the earth, um, folks that follow space or love seeing rockets, you know, we get excited about looking up at the stars and dreaming about what it's like to be up there. Um, and then when you're up there, you look back at the earth and say, this is such a beautiful planet. Um, I want to be back and visit all these amazing things that I'm seeing from this incredible point of view. Thank <laughs> you.